Hi guys, it's Inkita. Welcome to Enchanted Bookends. In this video, I'm going to talk about Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a classic strange people in a haunted house trope and it is really well executed. As the title suggests, this is a gothic book. So it's set in an old house in Mexico and it's set in the 1950s. This old house is owned by an English family that moved from England to Mexico to mine silver. They mine silver, they grow really rich, they build this house close to the mining site and sickness strikes the miners and they a lot of them die and they are buried in a cemetery next to the house. Uh, the family continues living there despite their mine uh, no longer being functional and we are in the 1950s. Our protagonist Noemi's cousin is married to, shall I say, the heir of the house and her cousin writes a hysterical letter to Noemi. So Noemi's father is really concerned and wants Noemi to go and check up on her cousin at this house which is really far away and kind of in the middle of nowhere so Noemi makes the journey to this place and she starts noticing strange things in the house first and foremost this family lives in a very outdated fashion they don't have electrical supply everywhere in the household so they use candles and lamps no music is allowed. It's basically a very gloomy place. There's a cemetery next to the house. It just, everything's so gloomy. Nobody's allowed to speak at the table, at the dining table. And when Catalina um, gets to meet her cousin, she notices her cousin is just not herself. And also she is not really allowed to spend a lot of time with her cousin. They make excuses. She has tuberculosis and she's sick, but Noemi, she notices that there is something really wrong and there are some legends associated with this house that she gets to know about when she makes a couple of trips into the town that's close by to this house. At one point, I really started wondering, is it the house? Because the house has a lot of mold, it's, it's really moldy. And I started thinking, okay, is it the mole that's causing these people to act weirdly, causing hallucinations, or are they even hallucinations and this house is really haunted? Or is there something really wrong with the people? Are the people responsible for this? Are they doing something? And I wanted to know that so badly. When I started reading this book, I wasn't really happy. <laughs> Let's just say I wasn't really intrigued. As I started reading this, I realized that, oh my goodness, this is a haunted house story. And I've had a history of not being really into haunted house stories. Like I've read classics. I've read The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. And I've read The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Absolutely love Shirley Jackson. But I didn't enjoy these books as much. They are psychological horrors set in a haunted house and I am a scaredy cat so in general I kind of avoid haunted house books. <laughs> I picked this one up because I know it is very popular and it's gothic so I had to read it but I didn't realize there were elements of horror but it isn't really spooky spooky horror like it didn't scare me but it did gross me out. Some parts in this are really gory and gross and that's <laughs> something you might want to um consider when you pick up this book but again the character arc of our protagonist noemi who is kind of a socialite she likes going out with guys um likes to date them but is never really serious about them and we see her character arc and her growth and there's a really a really lovely subplot of a, like this budding love uh, which I really liked and I especially, especially loved the ending. So I would highly recommend this book set in Mexico and never read a book set in Mexico before. Absolutely gorgeous book to read during this time of the year or really any time. This is the first book I've read by this author. She has written quite a few books, uh, but I was pretty sure I will like this, although I was skeptical once I started reading it. It did end well. 
I absolutely enjoyed it. It's only 300 pages and it is pretty quick read. And uh, I promise you once you hit like halfway through the book, you won't be able to put it down or maybe even 20% into the book if you are into haunted house stories. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read this book or any other book by the, this author or if you have a favorite haunted house story, I would love to know. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.